What's up everybody? My name is Scott Paddock and today we are going to talk about how to ad lib on the jazz standard summertime. Welcome to my first tutorial where I'm using a backing track. I have finally figured out how to get my iPhone into a track on my computer. So I'll be doing a lot more of these. So the first one I want to do is just an ad lib tutorial and we're going to do it on the standard summertime. Summertime is one of those tunes that almost every saxophone player learns at some point. Uh, so it's a really great one to start with. Uh, summertime can be done in several keys. Uh, the most common key and the key that I'm going to do it in today is F sharp minor on the saxophone, on the alto saxophone, which is A minor concert or B minor on your tenor saxophone. But it can also be done in D concert minor. A lot of people do it in that key also. I prefer the uh, A minor concert, which is F sharp on the saxophone. So Summertime is a 16 measure song and it is made up of four four bar phrases. And the first three four bar phrases are very, very similar. So it's a really good tune to learn how to ad lib on because the phrases are so similar. If you don't, it won't sound good and it won't have motion. So let's start at the very beginning. Here is your first four bar phrase. Now that is your first four bar phrase. And it also happens to be your third four bar phrase because that, that, that those four uh, bars repeat. So uh, let's talk about how to make this sound more interesting. The very first thing we're going to do is add some articulations and some dynamics. So we're not just playing long notes uh, with no articulation. So take a listen. So just by doing that, adding some dots, adding some swells on the long note, you can already hear a big difference in the way it sounds when it's not played with anything. That just sits there and doesn't go anywhere. Has a lot more forward motion. The next thing we can do is change the rhythm. But in this tune, there, at least in the first four bars, there's not a whole lot of notes going on. It's mostly a couple eighth notes into a long note. So changing the rhythm isn't going to be that great of an option. Take a listen. Like we can do that, it changes a little bit, but it almost seems a little contrived, like I'm trying to force it. So instead of that, uh, a better thing to do would be to repeat some notes, repeat some notes. So on those long notes, I'm gonna repeat some uh, and just give some forward motion. So my first three notes are C sharp, A, C sharp. On that second C sharp, I'm gonna repeat it a couple of times and you'll hear how much motion uh, comes into the song because of that. You hear that? It changes it a lot and it gives it forward motion. So let's do the whole four bar phrase. So just by repeating some notes, it's going to give you a whole lot of motion. Now at the end, you can hear I'm going. So between that A and the F sharp, I'm just doing a fall. So I'm starting on the A and I'm going A, G sharp, G, F sharp, just a chromatic fall. Listen to it in context. You hear that? Again, it's just another way to add some motion. So we're adding some notes in there, notes that aren't written in the original melody. Now the second four bars, uh, are almost the same. They just go to a B instead of going to a C sharp. That should be B right there. C sharp, A, B. So we just land on that B instead of on the C sharp. So even though the notes are a little bit different, uh, the feel and the vibe of it is very much the same. So we are going to add some stuff to it. Obviously, we can add dynamics and articulation uh, and repeat some notes. So I'll do that to give you an idea. Again, that's already going to give you a lot of forward motion. 
But on this one, I like to do a little walk down. So this time I'm gonna add some more notes. Uh, I'm gonna start on the B and I'm gonna walk down, walk down meaning like move down chromatically. So I'm gonna start on a B and then do an A sharp and then an A, listen to it. It just puts a real cool movement in there, like a chromatic movement. And I'm gonna put an F sharp in between each one of them just to make it bounce a little more. Take a listen. So I'm going B, F sharp, A sharp, F sharp, A, F sharp. Again, it's just a really cool way to add some motion in there. Uh, and chromatic walk downs are always a really cool idea to add. Now, another thing I could do, if I didn't want to do the chromatic walk down, is I could do a neighbor tone. A neighbor tone is a note above or the note below. So this time, I'm gonna, the, the main note we're talking about is a B. So I'm gonna do a C sharp above. You hear that? Or this time I'll do the neighbor tone below, which is the A natural. This time I'll do both of them. So we could do a chromatic walk down or we could do neighbor tones. Uh, now listen to what I do on this last note. The last note is a G sharp uh, and I'm gonna add some stuff in this. I'm gonna do kind of a chord outline to it. So that chord is a C sharp seven flat nine, which is kind of scary. But uh, what I'm doing is the note is a G sharp and I'm playing a G sharp fully diminished, which is G sharp, B, D, and F. And that actually fits with your C sharp seven flat nine really, really well. So I'm just doing a little chord, chord out line on it. And because I'm doing a diminished chord, it makes it sound a little bit out and a little bit cool. So take a listen. Again, the notes are G sharp, B, D and F. And that's it. So then I go back into the third four bar phrase, which I said before is the exact same as the first four bar phrase. So when we get there to the third four bar phrase, we don't want to make it sound exactly like the first phrase because we want each phrase to be a little bit different. That is why we're ad living. So here are some examples of how to make it sound different. So with that, I'm going. So instead of holding that long note this time, because I've already held it twice uh, in the previous phrases, this time I'm just falling out of it. Uh, let's keep going with that. Now, I did some repeated notes on the eighth note little run, but uh, when I got to that last long note, I did a trill on the C sharp. So the C sharp, uh, and I used this D sharp key, this key right here, to do a C sharp to D trill. This key gives you the trill. And again, it just gives you a lot of cool motion. So before we get into this last phrase, Let's ad lib on the first three with the track. So do you hear how that gives you a lot more motion? It makes it sound way, way, way cooler than just playing a straight melody. Here's what it sounds like with a straight melody. Again, it's barely even the same song. When you play it straight, it's just a bunch of, a couple of eighth notes, but it's a bunch of whole notes. Uh, when you add the ad lib to it, 
you get like lines that sound really cool and have motion and move forward. So let's talk about this last uh, phrase, the last four bars. Now you can already hear that it already has a lot of motion going on. The other one was, we're just holding that long note forever and then we have a couple eighth notes and we hold another long note forever. With the last uh, four bars of this, there's already motion. So when there's a lot of motion, we don't have to really do a whole lot to it. So we're obviously gonna do some articulation and dynamics. That's gonna make it sound a lot better. We can change the rhythm when you have eighth notes, a lot of eighth notes, you can make some of them longer and some of them shorter to change the rhythm up. Or, so you can play with that rhythm a lot more. Uh, you can also do some repeated notes, but we already have a lot of motion, so you don't need to add a whole bunch of repeated notes. Now we could add notes, but I really wouldn't add too many notes here because there's already so much stuff going on that you don't really need to add to it. And to me, it's gonna sound a little forced. So just by adding dynamics and articulation, uh, changing your rhythms up, repeating some notes, and where appropriate, adding in some notes, you can take a very plain real book lead sheet uh, version of a jazz standard and make it sound really cool, cool and really personalize it. So now I'm gonna put the track on and play a couple times and I'll do it different each time. That is how you take the jazz standard summertime and you personalize it with ad-libbing and make it sound like your own tune and your own melody. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. If you now understand how to ad-lib on summertime, I'd really appreciate it if you'd subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you have any suggestions for other standards that I should do this tutorial on, uh, leave it in a comment below. Thanks a lot.